All right, this is Mr. Bacon Pants Plays Games. Today we're playing Race for the Galaxy. This app came out many years ago. I don't know, maybe 2016, maybe not that long ago, but it's definitely not a new game. Uh, you can kind of tell even this desktop version, the Steam version, the graphics aren't as sharp as some of the other games that we've been playing. Uh, but this is one of my favorite engine building games. So also on the channel, I played Wingspan, which is a, a more modern app uh, and a more modern game um, that is kind of the same genre of uh, tableau builder, engine builder. Uh, the one thing that this has that Wingspan does not is like shared action selection. So in Race for the Galaxy, you kind of pick from a shared pool of actions and you get a benefit of that action and everyone else in the game gets a benefit of that action. Uh, so it's like a role selection. Um, not going to really go over in depth with the rules with this one. We're just going to go ahead and play it and I'll kind of talk you through it as we play. It's it's kind of complex. You're going to see it's a little bit like Wingspan, um, but it's also a little bit more complex. So I'm just going to play the two player experience mode uh, with the base game. I really like the two player experience mode. It's fast. Um, and you, you get a lot of options. Now, under the normal game, you only pick one uh, action or one roll a turn, but in the two-player experience mode, you pick two. So it's, it allows you to kind of... Um, it kind of mimics having multiple players in the game picking multiple actions, but it also gives you the power to play two actions that you really want, so you can kind of get some combos going. Uh, so I really like it. Um, so when the game starts out, you get to pick a planet. The planet's going to kind of point you in a direction that you should go. Uh, so right now I have the choice of kind of going all military. Uh, so that, that's what this means. So when I settle a planet, instead of discarding cards out of my hand to pay the cost that's in this circle, I could just pay the military value. And if I have enough of this in my tableau, then enough red circles with numbers in it, then I can kind of settle planets uh, without discarding cards. But in my starting hand, I don't have any uh, worlds or planets I can settle through military might. So it doesn't seem really good. Uh, so this one uh, is a little bit better, I think. Old Earth. Um, so we'll go ahead and select that one. So I'm going to zoom in on the card and kind of show you what it means. So uh, this is the each individual uh, role that you can select. Uh, it's all kind of marked off here. So this this card has no effect uh, when you pick the first phase, second phase, third phase, or rolls. Um, but it does have something where you can trade, um, you know, draw an extra card when trading any resource. So you can trade resources. Your planets can get resources on on them. You can trade them for for cards. Uh, you can also trade them for victory points, and that's the main way to get victory points is through. Um, trading goods also when you place cards the victory points is in this little uh, symbol here so uh, now i got to discard two cards so this is really worth nothing to me it's not worth any victory points right now this early in the game um this one's kind of expensive probably not gonna be able to play it and i haven't really picked a planet type that i want to go after so the goal of the game is to either deplete the victory point pile of points or play 10 cards in your tableau. And then once you do that, the game's over and whoever has the most points win. All right, so this first phase is all about drawing cards. It's called the explore phase. This is the development phase. It's all about um, building uh, developments, which are not circles, but diamonds. And I don't have any of those. Settling planets, uh, trading resources, getting victory points, and then producing. So when you have planets, uh, they produce uh, a good. So this is Spice World, so it produces spice. Uh, this is a, a windfall world, so when it has a halo, it means when you play it, uh, you will get a resource on it, but as you notice, it doesn't get a resource during the produce phase. Um, but it's kind of good because you, you don't... You know, this blue planet, I would play it. After, then I'll have to produce to get the good on it. And then I would have to trade to get the victory points. Um, these just come immediately in play. So you kind of get those goods right away. 
All right, so I obviously want to get some cards. You have two options with the Explorer. You have the draw two, um, keep one, or you have the draw five. So it kind of lets you um, kind of pick what you want there. Uh, I think I don't really have a good strategy, so I think I want to look at five cards, and I will play one of these planets. I will play. All right, so here we go. We have to discard six cards. We don't... I'm already just going to blindly discard these military. I'm not going with the military route. So I don't really need to focus in on that. This gives me a discount when I settle uh, brown planets. And I do seem to have a couple brown windfall planets. Uh, I don't really have any regular brown planets, but maybe that's something worth getting into. This lets me disc or, uh, trade a good for two victory points. That is kind of nice. Um, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep that guy. I think I'm going to really try to hard to, to play him out. Not this turn, obviously. All right. So I'm going to do the windfall. I'll discard that and... I'm going to say I'll discard the black market. And what's cool is that these cards that I'm seeing, uh, I will see them again. So that, you know, the deck cycles uh, and you, you, know, you do go through this deck. So the way this game works in real life is uh, everything is cards. So like the goods on the, on the cards are cards. You just lay a card on top to represent the good. And the planet tells you what color that card is. You lay it face down. Um, you know, there's cards in your hands. Like, so cards have multiple uses in this game, and they're all coming out of a shared deck. Right now, there's 87 cards and 16 cards in the discard pile. And so the deck cycles a lot. So, like, these cards that I'm seeing and I'm discarding, I'm like, oh, I really want that. There's an opportunity that I'll get it back. And that's, what's, that's what I love about this game. All right, so right now it's asking me to do a consume ability. Uh, so I kind of wanted to do this brown on the two victory point galactic uh, trendsetters, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. It's going to actually, if you look, it's going to allow me to, uh, oh, it's, it's only going to allow me to do this. Oh, discard up the two goods. Uh, most of these cards, you can only do this ability once, but this one lets me actually discard two cards for one victory point each. Which is kind of nice uh, later in the game when you have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, items or goods to trade, but not a lot of consume abilities. All right, so I'm definitely going to start drawing cards. Um, maybe I'll just do a turn where I just focus on drawing cards, hoping that they pick like a settle and I can play the Spice World. Or uh, I draw into something good. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just pick that. I'm really just going to focus on cycling that deck. All right, so again, blindly just getting rid of anything that deals with um, military. I don't really need to worry about that. All right. I got a windfall world. This one's, whoa. So this consume ability is discard two goods to gain a victory point in three cards. This gives me uh, a minus, so I, it costs one less to play developments. So let's get rid of this. I really need goods. I really need good production, so... Well, I might as well. And I'll just get rid of this guy. And then I'm not going to be able to do the, the next uh, develop action. So the computer gets one up on me. Ooh, look at that. They play a level six development. So here, this is the race. The race is on. Um, I need to get goods so I can get cards. It's the easiest way to get cards. Explore is not the most efficient way to get cards. So I'm trying to get out a planet. Yeah. 
And I'm going to use this ability, I think, to try to... Get it? Alright, so I definitely need to produce... And look at cards. All right, Rebel Planet, goodbye. Settle a planet. Uh, yeah, I got enough to get rid of. I'll go ahead and do the blue. I'm just going to go all in on blue. So that gives me military, that gives me military, and that's a military planet. And now I got two planets to produce on, which is great. And the ability, uh, the special ability for selecting this is the bonus. So when you're the leader, so that means that it's the action that you selected, you get a bonus. Uh, and for this one, I can produce on one windfall world. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, like they all, like the, basically I draw a card after settling. Um, this one is I get a minus one on the cost. Uh, so they, you get a benefit of picking the action. And so you don't... It's okay to follow. You get the benefit of following, but you get that, that leader bonus. All right, so obviously I need cards. So I'm going to do this to do this ability. Can I get two cards for each blue? And then I guess I can um, produce again because I'll be able to do that twice because I'll get here and here getting a bunch of cards and then I'll produce. Ah, they're going to, they're going to, uh, I'm like falling behind, but it's okay. I will make a comeback. All right. All right. So I guess it, I thought that would trigger. I'm not sure why that didn't trigger. Draw two extra cards when trading on oh novelty. That's why they, that's why they they were giving me three instead of what they normally give me. Okay. And then obviously I want to trigger this one and we'll do that. Okay. 10 to 18. Not looking good. I need points. You can play that for five. Okay, let's do it. And we'll just get a card because maybe we won't have to. Okay. So these level six developments give you victory points um, for like this one gives me for each novelty windfall world, uh, you know, consumer markets, expanding co colony. So this is pretty good with my blue strategy, getting four points and then hopefully I can get more. I don't have any windfall worlds, so wait, but then Ah Undo that. I want that card though. Alright, uh get rid of, get rid of Ah what am I doing? It undo undid the whole thing. Alright. Focus. Get rid of the galactic trendsetters. All right, I may place a world. Well, I'll go ahead and place this one. See, now I get six points for that. They're still kicking my butt. Um, you know what's fun? Yeah. They say they got the... the... Oh, it's 12 uh, development, sorry. I said 10 at the beginning of the video. But yeah, there it is. Uh, so they got most of their points from uh, the cards they had in play and not really the victory tokens. Uh, so neither one of us is really going with the victory point approach. Um, 
I was a little distracted, uh, you know, streaming the game uh, and, and playing at the same time. I, I normally do a little bit better, but I did do it on the hard AI, and the hard AI in this game is pretty tough. Um, so, I think who made, who made this game? Uh, the digital version. Yeah, Templegate Games. So, they're kind of known for their digital implementations that have really good AIs in their game. Uh, and so, yeah, this one is kind of a challenge. I don't really play online too much uh, with this game because I think it's a little slow. Uh, but I do love playing online. Or, sorry, not online. Uh, in solo mode. Uh, because the AI is so good. Uh, but anyway, that is Race for the Galaxy. That is an engine building game. It's a lot different than... Or a lot different looking than Wingspan. Uh, but it's kind of this, a similar concept. You're playing cards and, and that kind of build up off of each other. Uh, you're building an engine that you hopefully um, you are know, getting more points and, and kind of and kind of getting that going. But instead of birds, it's planets and developments and has a more of a futuristic theme. Um, and it is different enough to own both. I mean, they are completely different games, but just having the same mechanisms in them and some of the, and some similar concepts in them. But they are different enough. Uh, that you know, I play both of them all the time. Uh, but anyway, that is Race for the Galaxy. The app is a little old. It is starting to show its 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 age, uh, but it's still such a really great game. Uh, and if you don't have people to play with in real life, uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of get some reps in um, in between playing with people in real life. So this was Mr. Bacon Pants Plays Games. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to let people know about this fun channel. And we will see you next time.